Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Wireless LAN Infrastructure, Part 2. Today I'm going to be talking about basic wireless LAN topologies, and then we're going to conclude with wireless LAN concepts and terms. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by talking about wireless local area network topologies. And the first topology is the ad hoc topology. It's a very basic wireless local area network that does not require the use of a wireless access point, which can also be called a WAP, and it can also be called an access point. The devices negotiate the wireless connection between themselves. An example of this are when laptops connect wirelessly without the use of a wireless access point. Then there's the infrastructure topology. It's a more common type of wireless local area network that uses a WAP or multiple WAPs to create a connection point for wireless devices. Most often it's used to connect a wireless network to a more traditional wired network, but that wired network is not absolutely required. Then there's the mesh topology. This is a type of infrastructure topology that employs the use of multiple access points to create larger seamless network coverage areas. They're commonly deployed with wireless controllers and wireless access points. Something to remember is that the higher the wireless device density, the more wireless access points that will be required to handle the load. Like any other network device, access points only have a certain amount of capacity. As the workload increases, the amount of throughput will decrease as each device contends for access to that wireless access point. Adding more WAPs and or adding more access points and wireless controllers can greatly ease the load and increase the efficiency of the network. Now let's move on to wireless LAN concepts and terms. First up is the IBSS, or Independent Basic Service Set. An IBSS is created when an ad hoc network topology is created. The devices use the IBSS in order to control the communication that occurs between the connected devices. Then there's the BSS, or Basic Service Set. When a single wireless access point is in infrastructure mode, it will create a BSS. This means that it can control the flow of communication between every device that connects to the SSIDs under its control. Then there's the ESS, or Extended Service Set. An ESS is created when two or more access points share a common SSID and have overlapping coverage. Through the extended service set, the WAPs will negotiate how to hand off a wireless device between them as it roams the network. So I mentioned the service set identifier just a moment ago, or the SSID. It plays a key role in the wireless local area network environment. All active wireless access points will use a beacon transmission to advertise the networks that they belong to. What they advertise is their SSID, which can also be thought of as their network name. Those beacons are how devices know which networks they can connect to. Even when an access point is set to hide the beacon, the broadcasts are still occurring. So although hiding the SSID broadcast may make it more difficult to join a wireless network, it's not a true security measure because the broadcast is still occurring. Now let's talk about 802.11a-ht and 802.11g-ht. Both of these terms relate to the 802.11n standard. They denote the type of connection, a high throughput connection, and the radio frequency, which will either be the 2.4 gigahertz radio frequency band or it may be a 5 gigahertz connection. Then there's good put. Good put is the actual amount of application data passed through a connection with the overhead removed. It's measured in bytes per second. It is different than throughput. 
Throughput measures the total amount of data capable of being passed through a connection, so it includes network overhead. Then we have signal strength. It's a measure of the strength of the radio frequency signal that comes from an access point, which can help to determine the amount of area that can be covered by that access point. As a general rule, the closer a device is to the wireless access point, the stronger the signal that is received. This strength of signal can be affected by wireless access point or antenna placement, the type of antenna used, and interference sources that may be present. A wireless site survey with heat mapping tools can help in the setup of a high quality wireless local area network, or it can help you to pinpoint problem areas within your network. The heat mapping software builds a visual map by measuring the received signal strength indicator, or RSSI, and the signal to noise ratio, or SNR, which can be directly correlated to data throughput. Using these tools allows the administrator to find gaps in coverage as well as areas where the coverage extends beyond the desired boundaries, helping to create a more efficient and secure network. Now that concludes this session on Wireless LAN Infrastructure Part 2. I talked about basic wireless LAN topologies and we concluded with some wireless LAN concepts and terms. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.